What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. So this is going to be the next review for the Black Sabbath discography. And it is going to be on their seventh studio album entitled Technical Ecstasy. Technical Ecstasy was released in 1976. And it is the follow-up to the highly experimental, rocking, progressive album Sabotage the previous year. So after the difficulties of... The band sued by their former manager and firing him and sorting out the legal troubles between him and the band. The band had formed themselves into, I'd say, much more of a different style. And this album was recorded in the USA's Criteria Studios in Miami. And Don Arden became the next manager for Black Sabbath as well. This album, musically and lyrically, is a huge departure than what you would expect to hear from the previous six albums that are really dark, gritty, intense in terms of the music and the lyrics. There had been some troubles of the abuse on drugs and alcohol once again, but that didn't come in until the next album's era for Black Sabbath. This album was produced by Tony Iommi because the rest of the band spent less time working in the studio and spent time outside the Miami Beach. So Vertigo Records once again was the record label and even though that it did say Black Sabbath, the album was mostly produced by Iommi. And the lyrics were written in many different types of topics including the references on rock and roll to some orgy sexual provocative lyrics and transvestite style lyrics you get to hear songs with elements on some hard rock to some soft balladry and a little bit of blues here and there and i think that technical ecstasy is a hugely misunderstood album i was not a fan of this album at first but after many considerations of listening to it again and again and again and appreciating it more, I ended up really, really liking the album a lot. The cover art was designed by Hypnosis. Osborne once described it as two robots screwing on an escalator. Hypnosis Storm Thorgerson, who had been assisted by graphic designer George Hardy, discussed the cover with Zoo magazine in 1979. We were very fond of that cover, from the title of the piece Technical Ecstasy, I thought of something ecstatic rather than something technical, and I immediately thought of ecstasy in sexual terms, some sort of mechanical copulation which would be tricky to do. I then thought of ecstasy as falling in love, perhaps during a brief encounter on an escalator, and since it was technical, I thought of two robots. It's really quite simple. It's just done curves for the female and hard angular macho lines for the male. It's really quite sexist actually, stereotyped. Anyway, it's love at first sight, but I felt robots wouldn't do it like humans would do it. So instead, they're squirting lubricating fluid at one another. So the album begins with the song Backstreet Kids, and this is a hard rocking kind of song, and I really liked how it starts and continues on, and then later it goes into some of that progressive style uh, synthesizers that's was adding something different in the sound and textures in the instrumentation. But I find that Backstreet Kids was a song that started things on a pleasing note. Then goes into You Won't Change Me, which is my favourite song of the album. A Doom style guitar riff from the beginning with some atmosphere. And then changes things into many different spots. A lot of organ on this song and some very low weariness style lyrics and performances. The next song, It's All Right, is very, very different than what you would hear on a typical style piece of music from Black Sabbath. It was sung by Bill Ward, Ozzy gave him the confidence to sing it, and it is a Beatles-inspired piano ballad, and I think it is an excellent song. It's a really, really fitting song to be in this kind of direction. Because if this song would have been on one of the previous albums, things would have been a lot more confusing. But with this album's track, in this period of time, I think it fits very nicely. One of the other songs, Rock and Roll Doctor, is a song that some Sabbath fans quite dislike, to be honest. But I really like this song. It has 
a similar vein of a hard rock attitude kind of thing, like on Backstreet Kids. But Rock and Roll Doctor is very, yes, very cheesy, but I really like how simple and catchy it is. Dirty Women, the closing track, I really like. It's an excellent closing song. Starts on a mid-tempo kind of range, and then it goes into some of the quicker tempo change, then switches it back down, and then when the later half of the song builds and builds, it becomes more of a dirty rocking vibe, and with some brilliant solos from Iomi that he just rips it apart, and some of the vocals from Ozzy on this album are having that kind of attitude, and some that sound quite low and you know, very weary, like on the song You Won't Change Me, but with high strong vocals on Backstreet Kids and Rock and Roll Doctor. My least favourite song of the album is She's Gone, and this is a song that, don't get me wrong, has some very nice acoustic playing and orchestra, but I find the song, for me, to be a really dragging, meandering piece of music, and it goes on too long for me. It feels like that the song does nothing to appeal for me, and it's never been one of my favourite songs in the repertoire. Same with another song called All Moving Parts Stand Still, which starts out okay with some bluesy kind of licks, and then switches things to like a little bit of funk, but I find that some of the lyrics can be a little bit weak and cheesy. It's not bad of a song, but I just don't really see it as one of the album's best ones. Production-wise, I think from what Iomi had tried to do on this album, I really do like some decent guitar tones and some synthesizers that sound alright, and the drums have some good clarity, and the rest of the music, while the album is hugely varied, sound pretty strong. Technical Ecstasy is an album that really did not deserve the negativity and backlash that it deserved when it came out. But this really goes to show that Gazer once said that this was the beginning of the end of Black Sabbath, but things wouldn't turn out for the worst until the era for their next album and final album with Ozzy from the original classic lineup. So with that being said, Technical Ecstasy, I really, really like it. Very, very enjoyable. Tremendous vocal performances and harmonies to songs that sound very different from each other that I really, really enjoy. So with that being said, I'm going to give Technical Ecstasy by Black Sabbath an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.